we just got back from the supermarket and I wanted to show y'all my little onigiri haul. They're actually so fun. I've already chomped into them a little bit, but this one is chocolate peanuts. Then we have one with red bean paste and one with it's potato mayonnaise. It's actually so good. All three of these are so good. And the sweetness of like the chocolate and the red bean really complement the seaweed super well. Guys, if y'all ever have a chance to try these, oh, it's also three o'clock or like almost four o'clock in the afternoon. And we haven't ate since breakfast this morning. So I'm actually hungry. And these taste so good. Mm. Have y'all ever tried onigiri? One. And two, have you ever tried sweet onigiri? Yeah. I would suggest you do it right away. And everything peanutty here. Oh, wow. What else did we have that was peanut buttery or peanutty? Oh, we had that corn pancake, peanut pancake thing. Oh. Wow. Rice with chocolate? <laughs> Guys. That's a must. Yeah, so we just got back from our shopping trip at another grocery store. We went to this big mall and got a few snacks and everything like that. But now since it's almost 4 o'clock, I'm going to make noodles for dinner because we have that big thing of noodles right back there. It's really hard to do. You see my noodles, which I've already seen shown now, but I'm still loving them. We've had noodle soup every single day. And I also got some okra today, which I'm going to put in our air fryer. Life is so good right now. I'm telling you, life is great. With my noodles, I'm gonna cook my snake gourd. I'll try to show y'all a video of what it looks like on the inside. The onigiri taste test and the snake gourd are gonna be in my shorts, so if you want a full taste test, you should go there and check those out. Okie dokie, it's dinner time. I kind of showed y'all in the, uh, while I was cooking it, but it just comes out and it's kind of like this hollow shell thing, which I forgot to film for y'all. And you scrape the seeds out of it. And then I boiled it in water a little bit just to make sure it cooked all the way. But I did really simple with magic ingredients, garlic, ginger, and soy sauce. Magic, Asian food. Great. And then I have my noodles at the bottom and some bean sprouts because we got all those bean sprouts and I actually have been really enjoying the bean sprouts. So that is my dinner for tonight and I will see y'all probably tomorrow morning. I'll show you more of our haul, what we got yesterday. I'm trying to think. Yeah, so I'll show y'all more of that and we'll see y'all in a little while. Good morning. Let's make some breakfast. I'm gonna make a little bit of split pea on this, which apparently has extended from my Australia trip. We're gonna put it over some rice, and I don't know what vegetables we're gonna have yet because we're kind of getting out of vegetables. All we have is a lot of bok choy. That's what we're gonna do this morning. Then I think I'm gonna give you an apartment tour because I promised it on the last one, but did not do it. So let's make some breakfast. This onion is from India. And this garlic is from China. That's been a lot of fun actually, is getting to go to the grocery store and all their produce, it's labeled where it comes from. That's a very interesting to see and experience because in the United States, sometimes we know where our produce and other things are coming from, but here it's on every package label. And that's just something interesting and unique that we don't really get in the U.S., so.
Maybe we'll try to get around this and get the good parts if there aren't any. That's disappointing. That was gonna be my flavor. This is one thing that I've probably shown before in vlogs, but because we can't really use water out of the tap, I typically put water in bowls and wash all my fruits and vegetables that way and then empty that out throughout the day. Here, I'll show you a little bit later that we have a lot of actually water systems here. Dang it. So we have multiple levels of filter water in this apartment, which is really nice because we don't have to go and lug big heavy water around or do things like that. watery but oh well
Okay, so I wanted to explain to you the bathroom situation a little bit and all the different water sources that we have here, which is really interesting because we do not have them in America for the most part, I would assume. Um, I've never came across this in America, but why not sit on the toilet and explain the water situation to y'all, you know? So one thing that's really interesting in our bathrooms is that each of the bathrooms came with buckets. And in that bathroom, there's a really big bucket that they use for just in case there's a water shortage or they turn off the water or something like that. Our host said they only turn it off maybe two or three times a year and they will warn them before they turn it off. So it's not that big of a deal. And this bathroom came with a little bucket, which we took out of here because we're not using bucket showers and we have a shower head. Nowadays, it's probably not as common in the main, the modern apartments. They did bucket showers because they don't have shower heads on the wall. Also, they would probably only have cold water. With the bucket showers, they can boil water on the stove and then add it to their water and have warm water for their showers. And then of course use the bucket because they don't have the shower head. So that's just fun. I actually did that in India. We had a shower head on the wall in India, but it was cold. We were up in the mountains. So we did not want cold water on us every day. And they would heat up really big uh, kettles of water for us, add it to our water, and then we would bucket shower. So that's what we did in India while I was there. Not uncommon for me, and I've also been to Asia before, so the bathroom in general are not uncommon for me. Then we have, and obviously I'm sitting on the toilet because why wouldn't you live on the toilet while you're discussing shower things? But the bathroom's quite small because as you can see, I can grab the shower head we have a rain shower head in here and then also this shower head so this is what i shower with obviously there's an electrical heater you turn on the uh, heat switch outside and then it turns on the electrical heater in here and that's how we shower actually and so the whole bathroom gets wet this one's not too bad we have it facing towards the corner and so really only the floor gets wet if we take a shower in this one because this is the only one with the electrical heater we use the other bathroom, which so it's really nice to have two bathrooms. We don't have to get our feet wet every single time we have to go to the bathroom. The shower head's another water source in this bathroom. The amount of water sources, I'm like, these people are using water, cleaning themselves, but it's Malaysia, it's hot. You need to be clean and you need to get all the sweat off of you as well. So we have the sink over here, of course, and then this is what they call a hand bidet. You could use it to like wash the floor, but also they use it as a bidet here. You'll find it in all the public bathrooms. You'll find it in just all the homes in every bathroom. They have hand bidets and that's how they wash themselves. I don't use that because I'm American or Americanized, I guess. So we have our toilet paper. The water does not splash on our toilet paper from the shower, so that's really nice. The only other thing that we do here with these buckets, I'm getting every bathroom tour. I'm constantly wet from head to toe. I've got the floor completely wet. I'm <laughs> There's our bathroom situation, the water situation. I think it's so interesting as well because it's just so abnormal to have the whole bathroom get wet whenever you shower. I personally love just a normal shower because then I don't have to walk on wet floors and things of that nature, but you know, it actually is functional here and it works. And so why not? So another interesting thing that I think uh, is not normal is our bed sheet situation, I guess per se. We only have one bottom sheet for like the fitted sheet for our bed and we didn't get any uh, flat sheets at all here. Then they just gave us these like twin size, you can call them duvet covers, but they're, there's no blanket in them or anything like that. They're just really thin fabrics that we use as our comforter. Because we're in Malaysia, it's so hot here. I don't think it really ever gets cold here. We don't really need big thick blankets for bedtime and we do use our air conditioners we have three air conditioners here we use our bedroom air conditioner during the night 
and then once we're in the living room we turn on that every once in a while but we don't have the air conditioner on all day as long as we don't feel hot we're good to go if we're cook if i'm cooking in the kitchen sometimes we'll open that door and turn on the air conditioner but the kitchen and bathrooms lead directly outside there's no full glass windows on them we always keep the bathroom doors closed the kitchen door closed for the most part if we leave them open then that air conditioning is just going straight out to the outdoors which we try to conserve our air conditioning as much as possible and only use it when we need it so there's another different thing about malaysia that we wouldn't necessarily have to deal with in the u.s So for the last thing in this video, I wanted to do a little haul of what we did at the grocery store yesterday, tell you a little bit about what we did. I took the bus for the first time in Malaysia, which was really not bad. We did miss our second bus. We took the bus and then we got to the mall. It's a huge mall, very, very nice and lots of different food. There's food everywhere in the mall. That is the beauty of Asia is that there's so much food everywhere. And so we walked around, look at different things. Since we're in Asia, things are made here and that is so wonderful because it's a little bit cheaper here than anywhere else in the world, which is really cool. So I'm looking for a few, a few filming things like another microphone. I have one, but I don't feel like it does super well when I'm editing and the quality of sound. Then we also got a converter. We only have one right now and our rice cooker actually has a European plug. And then I of course have American style plugs and Yin has Australian plugs. And so between all those different plug situations, we only have one adapter. We only have one adapter. And so this is a universal adapter with the Malaysian thing. That was four ringgit, which is a little under one US dollar right now. And I've been wanting some hair clips, just normal little hair clips that I can just easily pull back my hair with. So I got those. Those were two Malaysian ringgit for six little hair clips, which is right under 50 cents. Then we ended up at the grocery store. This one was a little bit more like, yeah, not a super upscale grocery store, but a little bit more price wise. And so they have a few more imported goods there and things like that. So we actually got some gochujang, which it's been my lifelong dream to buy gochujang and I just never bought it in the US or anywhere else we've been. And now I have it. It will be perfect for my different spice situations and adding a little bit more flavor to my everyday food. We bought some yeast, which it has a roti on there. I don't know, do you use yeast for roti? Do you know? Have you ever made roti before? Let me know. Uh, I'm going to make bread here because we would rather have fresh bread. And since we have a little air fryer oven situation, I'm gonna make bread. My exciting thing, which is what I've been wanting. Before I even got to Malaysia, I saw that they had okra because I don't know if Malaysians eat a lot of okra, but Indians eat a lot of okra. It is different than the US okra, and I'm a little bit worried that it's gonna be super fibrous. I'm really hoping it's not gonna be fibrous. Fibrous? Fib fibrous. It's a little bit longer overall, whereas I would cut it in the US about half the size in the garden. And I'm going to air fry this, or I'll put it in anything, but roasted okra, you have to. You need to try roasted okra if you have never done it. It's my favorite thing. That texture, that sliminess, oh. And since I can't have a lot of fried okra anymore, which is, I think, generally how the Indians make it. If you're Indian, or you make a lot of Indian food, let me know down below how y'all make okra all the time. 
because that would I would love to actually know that and maybe I could try to make it myself especially while I'm here in Malaysia because I have access to okra and all the spices that y'all use so we got some ramen we got vegetarian ramen because it was the cheapest however I think I'm gonna do a ramen taste test here because we're in Asia and why wouldn't you do a ramen taste test in Asia? I've never tried Shin Ramen, I've never tried Indomie, obviously a lot more than those but because they're so popular right now and I have access to them and they're a decent price because we're here, I am so excited for that. But Yin Wan and Ramen, she loves ramen. Another thing I'm gonna do in my shorts is a Malaysian chips, corn, snack, taste test thing because we got all these different flavors of these corn snacks. So these ones, which are the only ones I've tried before, I don't like different flavored snacks so, and they're also fried so I can't eat a lot of them. But these ones are actually really good. They're curry bar barbecue flavor. For me to like them is, means a lot. They're sweet, kind of like American barbecue, but then they have the spiciness of the curry behind them. Really great. They're called corn toes, and they're kind of like Cheetos, but not as crunchy. I really wish these were just a hair crunchier to give that chomp like a Cheeto does. So we have that flavor. Then we have two other flavors. What is that? Chili cheese. And... Hot and spicy. <laughs> Hot and spicy. <laughs> I've never tried these before, so that will go in a short taste test. It was a good day out, very successful, had fun, got to see a few new places in Kuala Lumpur. I think that is all I'm gonna do for this vlog, but let me know below if you have any ideas of how to cook okra or if you want me to try a specific ramen flavor because I haven't bought them yet. Thank you for tuning in today. I would really appreciate if you subscribe down below, like this video, that would mean a lot to me. Let's go out and make the world 1% better today and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye guys.